Hi everyone. <clears throat> well, it's it has been a while since you've actually seen um, my face in front of the camera. You've seen my snakes, um, but not so much of me. And uh, this video is, I guess, even though you know there's it's snakes. Um, it's really more about um, me and myself today. So why I I don't have any snakes out. I could um, absolutely. Lily is out. She's up in the hangout spot. She's not actually over in her corner. Um, she's up on the branches and that all curled up sleeping um, but you know I've never been one to ever get on here and I I would use the word uh, rant about anything and I, I don't know if this is even going to equate to being um, a rant video or a um, what people call real talk um, video but I do want to let you know why you know I'm not so much in front of the camera anymore because you know I am physically and this video also isn't about um, wanting any sympathy um, from anybody that's not why I'm doing it but I do want to explain to everybody why I am not so much in front of the camera and you know it may get to a point where I, I truly hope not that I can't even pick up the camera and even do a video but I think you're aware that, you know, I've mentioned even just recently physically holding that camera for any length of time in my hand has become extremely difficult in terms of um, the pain. It, it, causes me and it does cause me a lot of pain um, you know my channel isn't about me and my woes and my problems and and issues and so on but I've always kept it real with all of you and my beliefs and how I see snakes and how I care for them and because that's what my channel was about, but I think at a point of doing videos and you've got to know many people, you know, I just feel I should explain a little bit more about slowing down on my videos. You know, I'm only doing a couple a week because I'm pushing myself to even do that couple of weeks and it's got nothing to do with I haven't got plenty to say because I have massive amount to say still and I hope that I will be able to continue to do that for a long long time but right now it's um, more and more of a struggle to to do them and that's the truth and I I really don't want to make this video a half hour thing so if I speed my words up and I'm talking really fast it's trying to get everything in um, so I'm not going to be boring you to death basically um, about what's happening but you know several months ago or a little bit longer than that you know I woke up and uh, I, you know I had pain in a shoulder and it moved to the other shoulder and uh, it you know was I was told I had pull 
uh, muscles and torn ligaments and, and all sorts of things in my shoulder. And I had treatment, I had cortisone, which did help me for a little while, but, you know, within a month, you know, I was waking up with soreness in my feet, my hands, my... It just felt like it everywhere, but mainly wrists and fingers and hands and feet and ankles and knees and... But it basically come recently with over the last seven months and my injury. Um, every day, two, four, five, six, seven, um, without literally wanting to not put them back into it. So, even if it's not comfortable, I don't sleep well because of the pain. And I have swelling, you know, my bones are starting to swell and, you know, I've gone from being such a healthy, energetic individual for, for 59 years of my life well I don't remember what I was like really when I was little but I'm sure I ran around a lot um, to getting out of it is extremely difficult and it's so disappointing to me having been what I consider to be somebody that has been probably more on the health end, healthy end of eating and life and doing to all of a sudden find that all of that um, hasn't really prevented um, some things happening to us and you know I have uh, rheumatoid arthritis so it's different to osteoarthritis and it's sudden and it is every day and we can go into remission um, where our bodies are doing really well and then it, it comes back. Unfortunately, I have not gone into remission with it and it's every day and it doesn't always go into remission. Um, you can never have that time and I do get up every day and I force myself um, to go for a walk I then come home and I have um, a hot shower um, to try and alleviate some of that pain and it does to a certain degree to where it makes it at least where I can um, get up and and lift the kettle with water in it and you know these days I can only put in enough to make myself a, a cup of tea so my worry is you know how much longer I am going to be able to pick up a camera and film my snacks for you all which has has been a massive part of you know my life for the last couple of years it has been everything that I really am on a day-to-day -day basis is sharing that with you all and I don't want to stop um, doing that because I do feel that not a lot um, show that side of living with snakes and there is a difference between living with your snakes and having snakes and I guess that's the difference if you want to put me in a category I'm not somebody that has snakes I am somebody that lives with them and certainly they live with me and I create that environment and that life for them. And I think because I have, I've been able to see and learn so much, but it's also given my snakes the opportunity to learn as well. And I think that is the difference between having snakes and living with, with snakes Every snake has the ability to learn. 
and you can train them and they can hear you you know when I first made statements about them hearing things you know snakes are deaf they can't hear and well we've known for a while now that that is not the truth but I've known that for a long time anyway um, so it was kind of nothing new to me um, at all um, to know that and being able to just share it, it was really all more about sharing um, what I'd learnt and what knowledge that I had gained from having 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 and living with my snakes that I wanted to impart um, to others that are as, as passionate about wanting to know a little bit more about them other than of course their genetics what possibilities they can get from that snake should they breed them and how much money breeding that with that and how rare is that and what price tag can I put on it and I I understand that too many um, <clears throat> that is like me slapping somebody in the face out there and I sure am probably uh, but it's the truth it is not it is fact it is not a lie um, and many people don't like seeing that their snakes are a money value to them or do not like associating um, business um, with having their snakes but the reality is that it is I guess that's just the difference between that person and me in one way that I am none of that and I am just all for offering the best possible life that I can for my snakes that are in captivity that did not choose to be in captivity either you know they didn't say hey um, grab me and put me into captivity because I would much rather be there than be out here in the wild and oh, to me in some ways they well for my snakes I feel personally they live a safer and a much better life here they never struggle or go hungry they're, they're warm they you know they've they've got anything going on with their health they get taken to a vet and, and get helped by a vet with care um, you know out in the wild they just would not survive so there are some great things about having snakes in captivity um, for the snakes but you know I wanted to take it all to another level a completely different level for them and not just offer them food and shelter but offer them and this is an artificial space this isn't a real space like out in the wild. I would love to have an environment that replicated their life out in the wild. Um, I wish that I could do that and maybe one day I, I can create some environment that does give them that and not in, you know, even for me who I feel I have decent sized enclosures for each of my snakes and they're not in tubs um, you know in an outside environment that they can go out and get that real sun on them yes I take my snakes outside and put them on the grass but I would like them to be able to do that freely and not because I have decided that you know oh yes you need to go to the toilet so yes they're asking me to do that for them but um, you know to have it set where they can come in and out and do that for themselves um, so you know I have all 
all that desire to do so much more um, with them all and to give them more opportunity outside of their enclosure and what I have provided they all utilize and they all really enjoy my big snakes that is um, and you know currently when I say big snakes you know even Maya gets to go up and explore the hangout space and Maya um, of course Ishi will Apani not so much because he's much smaller so um, you know the littler species um, Apani will eventually get to the size where he can but you know he's two and a half years of age and he's just not ready for that that big space up there unless oh if my vision was better maybe um, and I have put him up there and you know I'm constantly just there watching him to see where he is but um, I think you get an idea of, of what I try and do um, here with my snakes and not many do do that and from a PR standpoint you know you want to get into PR and uh, all of that when it comes to snakes then and being well let's put it in this way being concerned about you know all these people that have concerns about how these reptiles are actually living and wanting to have them taken away from us um, is is a real thing and you know I hope that and not that intentionally for me that what I've created for my snakes the environments that I've created for them does show a very positive aspect of having snakes in captivity as well so in many ways it's it's kind of beneficial um, for many that are concerned about that to up their level of care and I think it would make a really big difference to a lot of what is being said about us that have snakes in captivity so I guess it's really didn't turn into like a rant but a rant about my health because I, I don't like it and I wish it would go away and I wish that tomorrow I could wake up and jump up and go wow I feel so good today and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm and I don't feel that anymore that is something that I'm struggling with to feel so just a little heads up on where I'm at with my life right now and I hope you know like I said this wasn't a video to put sympathy out there for me at all um, this is just you know a little personal side of my life and still living with my snakes and still very much all for my snakes and sharing them with you all but um it's getting harder to do that but anyway guys you know I always say take care of yourself and I'm I'm doing that as best I can and your family which I do as well my friends kind of have taken a bit of a back burner um, due to my health because myself my family of course are a priority as well as my snakes and my other animals are too so guys thank you for listening if you've got this far and thanks for being there. Ciao.